Let's go over today's medical news. There's a successful gene treatment for Huntington's. In case you're not familiar, Huntington's is a neurodegenerative condition in which each subsequent generation has it more severely. This is caused by a faulty gene that makes proteins in your brain. The therapy targeted the genes in the brain and replaced them with a not faulty version. This slowed the progression of the condition by 75%. This would be the first successful treatment ever. We may be at the point where we're going to have gene therapies for every condition. If it's caused by a faulty gene, there's a way to do it. Now there is a problem that it's gonna be kind of hard to get every single cell in your brain treated. Your brain is an immune privileged area of the body. It's, you know, kind of encased in your skull and then there's the blood brain barrier. So the only way to target cells is to go directly in and it's difficult to get all of them. So a slowing of the progression of the condition by 75% is still incredible. We are also seeing treatments for things like hypercholesterolemia, so just treatments for genetic causes of high cholesterol being done. It's, it is exciting. In other news, meet your worm avatar. Researchers are using C. elegans, which is kind of a worm, to give them people's genetic conditions and try medications on. So each individual patient will have a worm, or several. There is a problem with rare diseases. Although very few people have them, there's still millions of people who have rare conditions. So they're not well studied. You can essentially run a mini medical trial using your own worm and see how these medications will impact you. The very same ideas are done with organs on a chip. If you follow me, you're very familiar with organs on a chip. You can grow any miniature version of a human organ and you can monitor it. You can even use it for computation if you really want to. Having communication between the organ and a computer is very important either way because it allows you to monitor the progression. So researchers are sending organs on a chip into space to see how microgravity would impact people. They can even test medications in real time to see if it would be helpful for an organoid. It's done with muscle tissue, bone tissue, and of course, brains, the things that we kind of need. This will protect astronauts. Funny enough, there does need to be astronauts there to care for the organs. They're pretty fussy, but robots can do that. And of course, there has been major progress in creating human embryos using skin tissues. You can make sperm and eggs out of skin tissue in the same way that you make other induced pluripotent stem cells. So you take tissue, you force it to become a stem cell, and then you apply a program to get it to be what you want it to be, and that can include gametes. So, firms and eggs. Researchers have successfully made embryos from skin tissue. Now, you might be familiar with what they've done in mice because this has been done in other organisms, just not people before. They have created sperms and eggs out of people's stem cells, but they've never made an embryo. This will not end up becoming a child. It's a proof of principle. You would have to find someone to host it, and that might be unethical. Of course, you also have the issue of imprinting, so you do need to get your respective cell from your parent at the right time because there's epigenetic stuff going on, and if it's not done at the right time, you're gonna have problems. Many of the embryos have the wrong number of chromosomes, they didn't separate correctly, but they did have a few that worked. I've read in the mouse trials that they just cut out the imprinted region. I would not have expected that to work. You're just taking out a portion of the epigenetics, but it did make healthy mice. This could be a future treatment for infertility. Fertility rates globally are dropping, so for everyone, not just in one country, and that may be a very serious problem and no one's entirely sure why. Some hypothesize that it has to do with microplastics and others think that it's just the natural consequences of overpopulation. More research is needed, as always. This has been your news. Enjoy.